everyone and welcome. Today I'm making a card where I paint a mushroom. There is a mushroom season here in Sweden and I've been loving going to the woods and just walk through the forest and pick some mushrooms. And that's what inspired this card. So let's get started. In my video where I talked about my favorite things about card making, I said that one of my favorite coloring mediums are distress inks, which inspired me and that's what I'm using here because these inks are not only great for blending, but you can also use them for watercoloring. But if you don't have these inks, no worries, you can use normal watercolors, which would be also more budget friendly. I also have here a watercolor cardstock cut down to fit the card base. And for the brush, I'm using a water brush, which holds the water inside of the pen, but you can use normal brush with water as well. And as always, the list of supplies you will find over on my blog, the link to my blog is in the description below. The mushroom I'm painting is this one. I found it in the woods near our house. I love these mushrooms, they are so delicious. As always, I practiced a bit before filming this video and I really liked the shape of my practice piece, so I decided to copy it. I used a thin white paper and I traced the outline. If you have a printer, you can print a photo and trace that, or you can also print an outline picture. And then on the back of the white paper, I scribbled the graphite of the pencil and I covered the whole area of the mushroom on the other side. Then I took the watercolor panel, I placed the paper with the mushroom outline on top and using the pencil, I went over the outline, which transferred the graphite on the watercolor paper. The outline is very soft, so you hardly see it in the video, but it was enough for me to see it. Also, the intensity of the transfer depends on the type of graphite you are using. There is even transfer paper that you can buy. Next, I squish the inks onto a board. I'm using here a laminated cardstock for that. The exact inks I used you can find on my website. The first thing I did is a light wash of color for the background. You can skip this, but I really like this style where you start with a light wash. However, here, because the bottom part of the mushroom is white or off-white, I didn't want to add any color over it. I could have added some color over the top, but for some reason I didn't. I just added a few different colors around the mushroom, mainly green, but also brown and red, and then I let it dry. Once it was dry, I started painting the mushroom. For the top, I used three shades of brown, ground espresso, gathered twigs, and tea dye. And for the bottom, I used antique linen, which is like of a white color and a little bit of pumice stone, which is gray. As you see, some of the brown seeped over to the stem. In the end, you don't really see it, but if you don't want this happening, use drying tool or wait until the layer is dry. I was using my heat tool after that. I painted few layers of the brown and once I was happy with the look of the brown top, I also painted the vertical stripes over the white stem. You can skip this, but the mushroom on the picture has something like that, so I wanted to paint it as well. I wanted the stripes to be a little bit more subtle, so I thought after it's dry, I use a clear water to lighten them up. Well, these are distress inks. They reactivate with water and I completely wipe them away. So I just reapply them and I left them as they are. Next, I painted the grass below the mushroom. First, I did a wash of the green color. I guess that's how you call it. Then I dried it. And then I added few of the individual grasses or how to call it, those short vertical stripes. I mainly used green, but I also used two or three strokes of brown, which looked a little bit weird. So I used clear water and diluted them. I just used the brush to spread the color underneath the mushroom. I hope you understand my explanation, but if not, don't hesitate to ask in the comments. Once everything was dry, I added splatter, but you can skip this step. I just like the look. 
I wanted to add a little bit more of the dark red. I really like this shade, but I also use the green and the dark brown. And then I let it dry. To finish up the painting, I also painted a border, which is another step that you can skip. I just like to add some kind of a detail to the card to frame it up. For the border, I used the dark brown again. I dipped my brush into the paint, making sure I have it on the edge of the bristles because I used the edge of the brush to apply the color to paint the border. But as I said, you can skip this step. Lastly, I adhered the panel on top of a card base. This time I used a double-sided foam tape, so it's a little bit raised. And I decided not to add any sentiment, any words on the card, because it looks good without it. But I was thinking adding a black banner with a white embossed sentiment, something like this. What do you think? Shall I still add it or do something else or leave it out? Let me know in the comments. So I hope you like this card. If you did, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't done so already. If you would like to see more inspiration with cards that you can paint yourself completely from scratch, just click on the playlist that is on the screen now. Thank you all so much for watching and I will see you in my next video.